Once upon a time, in a little cottage in the woods, lived a mother goat and her little goats leading a happy life. The little goats were very cute. They all were like toys. Mother goat, like all mothers, loved her little goats very much. She protected them from all the wild animals in the forest. One day, before she left the house to find food in the forest, she called her little goats next to her and, "My dear children, I am going into the forest. Do not open the door for anyone. If the wolf comes into the house, he will eat all of us alive. He is very shifty. He will disguise himself into different shapes and try to fool you. So how will we recognize him?" The wolf has a rough voice, and I have a soft and sweet voice, so you can recognize him from his low and rough voice right away. Right when she was leaving, the mother goat remembered something else. She turned to her little goats. Ah, one more thing: the wolf's feet are black, and mine are white. You can also recognize him from his feet. Don't worry, mother. We can protect ourselves. You can count on us. Mother goat kissed her little goats one by one. And headed into the woods. The wolf was watching them from afar. When he saw Mother Goat leaving, he waited a while, and then he came in front of the cottage and knocked on the door. Who is it? Little goats, open the door. Your mother is here. I brought nice food for you all. But the little goats recognized the wolf's rough voice right away. Without opening the door, they yelled out, "You're not our mother." Her voice is sweet and more beautiful. You're the wolf. You can't fool us. The wolf got very angry because he could not fool the little goats. So he went to the shop. Bought a big piece of chalk and ate it. Now his voice sounded much softer, so he went back to the cottage and knocked on the door again. This time, the wolf started to talk with his soft voice. My little goats, open the door. It's your mother. I brought food from the forest for all of you. Hearing the wolf's soft voice, the little goats thought that it was really their mother this time. Just when they were about to open the door, one of them shouted, "Wait, wait! Let's look at the feet from underneath the door." Of course, when the little goats looked from underneath the door, they saw the wolf's black feet. So they yelled again without opening the door. "We will not open the door for you. Our mother's feet are not black. They are white. You're the wolf." As furious as he was, the wolf left. This time, he went to the bakery. When the baker saw the wolf in front of him, he was very surprised. I'm a vegetarian now, so I will eat pastry from now on. Could you give me some flour? The wolf came out of the bakery with a little sack of flour. When he got near the cottage, he opened the sack and poured all the flour on his feet. Now his feet were all white. The shifty wolf knocked on the door for the third time. My little goats, open the door. It's your mother. I have brought food for all of you from the forest. First, show us your feet, so we know it's you, mother. The wolf showed them his feet with flour. When the little goats saw the white feet, they believed that it was their mother and opened the door. And what did they see? The wolf was standing right there in front of them. The little goats. Did not know what to do. They started to run around yelling. <laughs> Don't waste your time. I will catch all of you. One of the little goats went under the desk. The second one into the bed. The third one into the chimney. Fourth kid hid in the kitchen. The fifth one got into the closet. The sixth hid behind the curtain. And the seventh kid went into the giant clock on the wall. But the shifty wolf was quick, and one by one he caught them all from wherever they were hiding. Run! Run! Come here! Don't run! I will catch you all! I said stop! Arr. 
the only one he could not find was the one hiding in the clock. He was already full, so he gave up on looking for them and head out. There was a big yard a little further from the cottage. The wolf lay under a tree on the yard and started to sleep, snoring. Short while after, the mother goat returned home. When she saw the door open, she knew something bad had happened, and started to scream. Oh, my little goats! <gasps> When she entered the house, she was shocked. The tables and chairs were all upside down. Curtains were torn. The beds were all messed up. The pillows and sheets were all on the floor. Mother goat looked for her little goats, but could not find them anywhere. She started to yell out their names one by one, but not one answered. Finally, it was time to call the last one's name. Only then she heard a high-pitched voice. I'm inside the grandpa clock, mummy. Mother goat ran to the grandpa clock and took her kid out of there. Mother goat and kid hugged. The little goat started to tell the story, crying. The wolf came in disguise and he thought it was you and opened the door. The wolf ate all my brothers. <laughs> oh, darling! Mother goat was very upset. She cried for her little goats. With only one of her kids remaining. She walked out and started to go towards the yard. After a while, they saw the wolf sleeping under a tree. He snored so bad that the branches of the tree were shaking. Mother goat observed the wolf for a while. She realized that inside his tummy, some things were moving. Oh my God! Can it be that my goats are in his tummy and they're still alive? She had a plan. She turned to her kid. Run home. Bring me a needle, thread, and the scissors. When the little kid was running home, mother goat collected six big rocks from the floor. After a while, the little goat came back with a needle, thread, and the big scissors. Mother goat cut open the wolf with the scissors. She saw one of her little goats right away, and then the other ones started to appear one by one. They were all healthy. Mother goat couldn't stay still from the joy she had. All the little goats hugged their mothers with joy. Mama, mama, we love you. Mama, mama, yay! Oh, mommy, we love you, love you. They were all full of joy. Ah,、oh, my little goats, you're safe. Mother goat put the rocks she collected carefully inside the wolf. Then she stitched his tummy with the needle and thread. The wolf was sleeping so deep he did not feel anything. He did not move. Mother goat and her little goats quickly got away. When the wolf woke up, he stood up. His tummy hurt really bad. He thought to himself that it was because he ate too many goats. Because his tummy was full of rocks, he got really thirsty. He came next to the river to drink some water. But when he was walking, the rocks were hitting each other. My tummy feels so heavy and full. It's as if all the goats I ate turned into rocks. He wanted to kneel down and drink some water. Due to the rocks being so heavy, he lost his balance and slipped into the water. Oh, help! Help me! I'm drowning! Help! Yelled out for help, but no one helped him. He could not bear the weight of the rocks any more and went under into deep waters. When they saw what happened, Mother Goat and her little goats ran to the river. They all started to dance and jump around. 
From that day on, Mother Goat and her seven little goats had a peaceful and happy life in their cottage in the forest. In a land far, far away, there lived a miller with his three sons. When the miller died, he left his oldest sons the mill, and to his youngest son, he left his cat. His youngest son got really upset. Unlike his brothers, it was almost impossible for him to get by with the will he had got. He looked at the cat and said to himself, What can you do with a cat? You can't even eat it. But suddenly, something very unexpected happened. The cat answered back. You're awfully wrong about me, sir. I can be much more valuable to you than you think. The young man was stunned to see the cat talking. He asked, stuttering. You? How's that possible? If you bring me an empty sack, a hat, and a pair of boots, I will show you how. With his surprise wearing off, the young man thought to himself, if this cat can talk, he sure might know something. All right, let's see what you can do. Young man brought everything the cat had asked for. The cat put the hat on, put his boots on, went to the mirror and looked at himself with pose. Then put a bunch of lettuce, along with one carrot, in a sack and took off. When in the wood, he opened the sack and put it on the floor. long after, noticing the fresh aroma of the vegetables, a bunny rabbit appeared. In order to eat the lettuce and carrot, the bunny rabbit entered the sack. The cat then quickly ran to the sack, tightly tied it up and trapped the bunny rabbit in there. Instead of taking the bunny rabbit to its owner, he took it to the castle and told the guards that he'd like to see the king. Seeing a talking cat that's wearing a hat and boots, the guards quickly took him to the king's presence. Mighty Lord, I present you the gift of the Prince of Caraba. My master, the Prince of Caraba, has caught this bunny rabbit for you just now. The king was very impressed with this gift. For a very long time, Puss in Boots continued on bringing animals that he caught for the king. And soon after, everybody in the kingdom began to talk about the prince's generosity and wealth. Each passing day, the king's curiosity grew, and so one day he asked Puss in Boots. Is your highness young? Oh, young and very handsome indeed. Is he rich? Very rich, your highness. He would be honored to welcome you in his castle. At last, the king and queen were very happy to hear that they were going to meet this very handsome prince. If what Puss in Boots says is true, I think we might have just found the perfect husband for our daughter and a suitable prince for our kingdom, said the queen. A few days later, Puss in Boots found out that the king and queen were out on the town with their daughter. This is the day I've been waiting for. He ran straight to his owner. Sir, we have to go to the riverbank right away. Follow me quickly. The young man did not understand what was going on, but he did, as he was told. But why did we come here? To swim, sir. To swim? But I don't know how to swim. It's better that you don't. Take off your clothes immediately and get in the river. Trust me, sir, you won't regret it. Young man did as he was told and went in the river. And Puss in Boots hid his owner's clothes behind the bushes. When the king's carriage was passing next to the river, Puss in Boots ran to them, alarming. Help! Help! 
My master Prince of Karabai is drowning! The king immediately sent his men to the river. When his men were saving the young man, Puss in Boots explained to the king how the thieves had stolen his master's clothes. The king ordered the men next to him. Bring some of the best clothes we have to the prince. With his new clothes, the young man looked just like a real prince. When he was walking towards the king's carriage, the princess and the queen were watching him. The young man came next to the king and bowed before him. I can't thank you enough. My master, the Prince of Karaba, will be honored to host you in his castle, my king. I'll go now and prepare. Puss in Boots quickly ran off. The young man did not really understand why he was called the Prince of Karaba, but again he thought that Puss in Boots was up to something and kept silent. The princess immediately fell in love with this handsome prince. While running fast to a castle that belonged to a monstrous giant, Puss was yelling to the farmers that worked along the way. The king is approaching! If he asks, you will say that all this land belongs to the Prince of Caraba, or else he will punish you. Puss in Boots was running, and at the same time he was repeating the same to everyone he saw along the way. While the king's carriage passed along the way, everyone kept saying the same thing out of fear. The king was surprised that the prince owned such vast amount of land, but he was happy nonetheless. Meanwhile, Puss in Boots arrived to the giant's castle and knocked the door. The door opened with a big noise. When he saw a cat in boots with a hat, the giant was very surprised. When Puss in Boots started to talk, the giant was surprised even more. Good day, Your Highness. Who are you and what are you doing in my castle? Puss in Boots started to implement his plan. Well, let me put it to you this way, Your Highness. I am the king's loyal servant. The king has told me much about your amazing abilities on magic. Yes, that is right. For example, are you able to transform yourself into a huge lion? Sure I can. This is very easy for me. Using his amazing magic, the giant transformed into a huge lion. Puss in Boots got very frightened, of course, and jumped as high as he could. Okay, okay. Uh, that's enough. The giant transformed back to his normal self. That was amazing. I bet it's impossible for you to transform into any small animal, though. I'm not sure. What do you say? Impossible? I can transform into any animal I want. Hmm, let me say... Can you transform into a small mouse? <laughs> the giant was laughing so loud that Puss was having trouble staying in the same spot. And so the giant used his magical strength and transformed into a mouse. Seeing the giant transformed into a mouse, Puss quickly jumped on the mouse and with a big bite, he got rid of the giant. Meanwhile, the king's carriage approached the giant's castle and Puss quickly ran towards the king. Your Highness, my lord, the Prince of Karaba's castle is at your service. Please come in. The king, queen, princess and of course the young man gazed at the castle with admiration. While walking towards the castle, the queen asked the young man, My dear prince, are you married? No, your highness. If you would allow me to wed your beautiful daughter, I promise you that I will make her very happy. A huge 
huge feast was prepared at the giant's castle, and the prince and the princess got engaged. Soon after, they got married. Do you see, sir? I told you how valuable I was going to be. From that day on, Puss in Boots continued to be the prince's loyal servant. Together, they lived a very rich and healthy life.